I forgot to test this ahead of time. I'm testing, are we doing okay? Wonderful, good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm gonna welcome everybody on Zoom and welcome everyone in person as well. I think after so many weeks, I can't even remember how many weeks now, life is moving at a weird pace. Um, we're finally starting to get a little calm before worship for the worship tech team. So thank you again, everyone give a big pat on the back when you see our tech team because this is a lot of stress for us, um, trying to make sure that worship happens, so <laughs> both online and in person. So um, we are going to begin, and I always have too many things around my neck now, pandemic things, but we'll deal with it. So here we go. So I am Pastor Amy Barsh Odal. I am so glad that you are here. Welcome to Salem's Hybrid Worship. Um, if you are online, please mute yourself at this time. I think Hans is going to take care of that. Just to connect us, uh, both online and in person, last, just to give you an idea of last week, we had 50 participants on Zoom or online, and we had, and we had 15, 50 people here in the sanctuary. So um, we are a community wherever you are, if you are online or if you are here. Um, we do not believe it is an accident that you are here. Salem's mission is to share God's love, and I welcome everyone to Salem Lutheran Church and School. Our worship service is being recorded. It will be available later on Salem's YouTube channel, so if you are watching the replay, I welcome you as well. If you are in need of more information about Salem and the activities that are going on here, there are a lot, please check out our website at salemlutheranglendale.org salemlutheranglendale.org. If you are online, please type in who you are and where you're watching from at this time. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please type those in the chat box. If you have prayer requests and you are in person, we do have some yellow cards. I was going to wait for next week to tell about this, but we will tell about it now. Sue, where are those yellow cards? They're back there. So if you want a yellow card, ask TJ, our usher, and or Jim. They will provide you with a yellow card for prayer requests. Okay, we have a very active prayer team here. And um, we really want to make sure that we are responding to prayer. December lunch program needs helpers. That is this week, next week, and one more week, I think. So last week was our first week of December lunch program. If you're interested in helping out with that, stay after worship and go to the fireside room. We are handing out um, sack lunches. So they are assembling them at 11 o'clock, and then I believe they are um, serving them at noon or 1. I forget. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock is when they come. So... If you'd like to help with that, go over to the fireside room after church today. Our COVID protocol for in-person worship is that you need to keep your mask over your mouth and nose at all times, including musicians and speakers. One speaker or soloist may have their mask removed for the duration of their speaking or performance, which would be me right now. Um, we ask you to sit spaced out as, as you feel comfortable. Um, please don't come if you're sick. That's a no-brainer. Uh, we ask that you hum or sing softly. Um, don't belt it out yet. We can't do that yet. Um, if you are outside after worship, please socially distance, but we are not policing. You may, if you want to hug, you may hug, but um, it's your respect of other people's comfort, right? We all have our own comfort right now during the pandemic. I have a few announcements I want to make. First of all, uh, weather. There were a lot of tornadoes that happened in the Midwest, I believe, and in Kentucky specifically. We please keep those families and people in your prayers. Um, a lot of devastation. I saw a little bit about Mayfield, Kentucky, which was absolutely destroyed. So please keep those families um, in your prayers. God is there with the people who are helping to restore those, the homes and the people. Um, as you can see, our chairs have been moved because Hotel Noel is coming this week with the school. Hotel Noel is our Christmas program. We have a professional videographer coming to uh, videotape it. It will be uh, available online on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock in our church Zoom room. Uh, we also will be using it at worship. If you don't happen to, if you're busy on Wednesday night, um, we will be able to show that to you um, during the worship service as well. So that's why we have a little, I don't know if that's a bus or a car or a taxi cab or what that is, but there's props up here for now because we've been rehearsing. Um, also, uh, if you notice, we're the, back in the narthex was the God's, Goods gi go God's Good Gifts, our go God's Global Barnyard. We are raising some extra money for animals to be given to people who are in need and who can use them to, um, to raise money for their, themselves. And if you want to give a gift for someone, like you don't want to give somebody another pair of socks, you might want to give them some chicks. So for $10, you can buy chicks. And then I have these great Christmas cards that you can give that say, like, Merry Chickmas. 
And inside, they say, 10 little chicks make a big difference for your $10 donation. You will, um, with this gift, things are looking up, sunny side up, that is, and your gift goes to ELCA World Hunger. All right, or have yourself a dairy little Christmas. Okay, so really fun Christmas cards that go along. So if you, and you also have an ornament to take, so you can take that ornament if you decide to purchase one of those. Also, speaking of ornaments, I have a little tree over here. This is, remember our theme this year is close to home. This is starting to look like home because it's kind of messy up here, right? From our children's sermons each week as we build. This is our homemade, our home tree. If you have an ornament from home that you'd like to donate, please bring it and hang it on the tree. It can be homemade, it can be one that you don't need anymore, it can be your favorite one, whatever you want to do to donate to our home tree this year. Those are all of my announcements. That's too many. I know I don't like to do this many announcements, but I needed to do that for today. So I ask that if you are able, please stand as we begin worship. God does not reside in one place. God is everywhere. Today, this space where I am, where you are, is holy ground. Here at Salem, we believe there is no person or created thing outside the active love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A voice calls out in the wilderness. It sings, it sings of a home for all, a home of justice and peace, a home bursting with joy. We could choose to ignore it. Instead, we come into this sacred place. We let the world grow quiet, and we hear joy in the giggles and stretches of a newborn child. Joy in a tail wagging dog sliding to meet you at the door. Joy in unabashed laughter, freely shared at tables of hospitality and warmth. Joy in making it home after a long journey, discovering that you are found when you thought you were lost. Today we are going to light the candle, so I'm going to ask uh, Ragnar. Are you going to be my helper today? All right, Ragnar's going to help me with the candle, and I think I forgot to get the candle lighter. So why don't you come on over here and get ready? Oh, we don't have the candle lighter. That's right. You're going to help me with this, these candles here. Okay? Here we go. We are going to twist them. How many, how, many can, how many candles do we have this week? Do you know? Let me give you a hint. Three. All right. Do you want to come on over here and try and twist that for me and see if it lights up? Twist it. There we go. One. Can you do a second one? Oops. Two. Oops. All right, and one more. Can you do one more? Oops, that one went out. I'll, let's see. These are harder than real candles, aren't they? There we go. One more. Can you twist one more? And the reason why we have this, oops, twist it the other way. We have this Advent wreath is because these are our homes to symbolize our theme. There we go. I'm going to help you. Let's see. Am I going to burn my fingers? No. Okay, there we go. Good. I think all three are lit. If, thank you, Ragnar, for helping with that. If you are at home and you have your Advent in a bag, this is the day that you start with the three candles, lighting the three candles. Today we light the candle of joy because the welcome God has for us is nothing short of good news, of good news of great joy. Seriously great joy. Family of faith, we are close to home. Let us worship God.
first reading is from Zephaniah 3. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather for you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. I've got a children's message. I see a couple kids. Why don't you come on up here? I've got a box today. All right, let's see if I can do this without dropping anything. Okay, hi, Graham. Roland, Ragnar, anybody else that I didn't see? Come on up. Okay, you guys can sit down there. I'm going to be a little bit further away if I don't have my mask on. Okay? All right, so this is our third week in Advent. Third week in Advent. And the first week, we talked about what's in a house. That's why we have this little playhouse here. We talked about the different parts of the house. Ragnar, remember how we put the bed in there and things like that? Do you remember that? Yeah? And then last week, we talked about building a strong foundation. So we've got a foundation here for our house. Do you remember that, Graham? Yeah. This week, we're going to talk about something else, okay? Now, we haven't read the scripture yet. I'm going to read a little portion of the scripture that's going to happen right after this. This is from the Gospel of Luke, okay? John the Baptist was preaching in the desert, and this is what he said. He said, the people asked John, what then should we do? And John answered, if you have two shirts, share with the person who does not have one. If you have food, share that too. And John continued to preach the good news of Jesus, saying many other things to encourage the people of God. And that was the good news. So he said to share. I wonder if people heard what John said and if they did what he asked them to do. What do you think? Is it easy or hard to share? Honest. Hard. It is hard to share, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How does it feel when someone shares with you? It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I've got this box here, and I was thinking about how John said, if you've got, what did he say, if you've got two shirts, share one, if, they, if you don't need it and somebody else needs it. So I've got this box of things that I'm going to share, okay? So I have this really cool puzzle, and I've done it a couple of times, so I thought I would put that in a box to share with some, and bless someone that doesn't have a puzzle that might like to do a puzzle. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Okay, so now I also have this book. Does anybody have books that they don't use anymore that they might not read or they might want to share with someone else? Do you share with your sister? Okay, maybe you could share with someone who doesn't have books because there, actually there are kids in this world that don't. So this is a book, a Disney book. I bet Ashley would like me to share this with her. <laughs> um, but this is a Disney book that, that no one in my house is reading anymore, so maybe I should share that. Do you think that would be a good idea? Okay, uh, here's some more ideas on things to share. So John said to share a shirt, right? So I've got this this shirt that doesn't fit anymore, so it's in good shape, right? Do you think, oh, God bless you. Do you think I should share this sock that I have here? What do you think? I don't wear this sock anymore. Why don't I wear this sock anymore? It has a, hole. has a big hole. Would that? So I want to get rid of that. So is that something good to give to somebody? Yeah. Why? Because it's garbage, right? It's, you wouldn't want to share something that's not good. So instead of sharing this mismatched pair of socks that I had in my house that had a big hole in them, I'm not going to put those in my box. I'm going to put these nice ones here that I don't wear that are brand new, actually, okay? Because guess what? The number one thing in homeless shelters are clean, new socks that people need. Why do you think that would be? If your feet get cold, your whole body gets cold, right? If their feet are wet and things like that. So I also have two hats that we don't wear anymore in our house. <laughs> which one, which, should I give both of them away? Yeah? Does this one look like it would be good? Does somebody want to wear this one? 
No, I, I don't think that one's, this one's kind of junky, right? But this one looked pretty good? Yeah, I think some, somebody might like that, right, Jane? <laughs> okay, one more. Let's see, how about this book? Is this a good book I should be giving away? No, okay, so we, we do, when we give things away, we want to give away, how about this? This has all the cards in it, so do you think this would be a good thing? Yeah, okay, and then I have a nice pair of shoes as well, okay? So can you help me put these back in the box, the things that we should give away? That would be nice. Yep, put this. And these are the things I'm going to put in the garbage can, okay? That's a, that puzzle looks pretty fun, doesn't it? Okay. Oh, you're a Bears fan, you don't like the Packers. I get it. Yeah, that happens. But somebody else might like the Packers or might just need a hat, right? Okay? So what I want your message for us today is that the good news is that God gives us the ability to share, right? I'm going to talk to the big kids out here about sharing today in my sermon, too. You guys will listen to that as well. Big news for us today, the good news is that we get, we get the opportunity to share with other people, and that's what God wants us to do. So if we have extra stuff, if we have extra things, we can share with other people, okay? Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us what we need. Help us to share so that the world can be a home for everyone, and they can be included to be fed, to be housed, to be clothed, to be listened to and loved in the way that you want that to happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So your homework for today is to think about something at home that you could give away, that you could share with someone else, okay? And make, and make it happen, all right? So this is adding to my, this is kind of starting to look like my home, a little messy, right? But that's what a home is, okay? All right, you guys can go sit down. We're going to stand up for our gospel acclamation, please, if you are able. Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from, from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what then should we do? And John said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers also asked them, And what should we do then? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone who by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your own wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But... The chaff will be, he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and his Son Jesus, who is the Christ. We are getting there. We are getting there. Today is the third Sunday in Advent. As we continue our Close to Home sermon series, today we focus on that theme, Close to Home, and our weekly theme, A Home for All, and Joy, as you have seen in the liturgy that we have written together today and said together today. 
John the Baptist just gave us a lot to think about. The scripture we read was harsh. It is hard to hear. It was hard for the people who heard it in person, too. John is preaching a home for all, where inequality is banished, valleys are lifted up, and everyone has the resources that they need. John's message is one of joy, a world where everyone has enough, and all are treated with fairness and love. John's message is hard because 2,000 years ago, the people who heard that message were not there yet, and he was calling them out. He was calling them out to do better. Today, John is speaking to us because we are not there yet. And John is calling us out as well. He is calling us out to work toward building people up and repairing relationships. He's calling us up out to be builders of God's kingdom here and now. He's calling us out to share God's love, hope, peace, and joy. When I was preparing for today's message, I read and reread this scripture. And what kind of sparkled for me, what really stood out to me, because this passage is filled with a lot of things to talk about, right? But what really stood out to me was that three times in today's scripture, John is asked the same question. He is asked this question in response to his harsh proclamation. He's asked by the crowd first, what should we do then? He is asked by the tax collectors, what should we do then? And he is asked by the soldiers, what should we do then? John is preaching repentance. Don't get comfortable because you don't get comfortable because you are loved by God. That love should actually make you uncomfortable. God's love changes our hearts and our minds. God's love is active. Repentance is tied to action, not because God requires us to do something, but because we are loved, we are compelled to love other people. Because we are forgiven, we can forgive other people. Because we receive the peace of Christ, we can share God's peace. You get the idea, right? Raise your hand. You get the idea of what I'm talking about? Okay, all right. John is preaching that we, when we follow the way of Jesus, it doesn't mean just talking about it. It means acting on it. Out of repentance flows action. The same question was asked of John three times. What then should we do? What then should we do? And John gave three good responses to that question. It's simple. What then should we do? One. Share what you have with people who need it. Share what you have with people who need it. Number two, whatever your job is, do well in your job and be fair. Do well and be fair. And number three, be content with what you have. Be content with what you have. It's simple and it's hard, right? John did not have time to comfort the people or us and give us lots of warm fuzzies people who live carelessly or selfishly. He didn't do behavior modification through positive reinforcement, right? He was preparing the way of the Lord. You know that teacher speak, right? Yes, you do. Okay, teacher or parent speak, right? He was calling people out. He was telling them to turn around, repent, and do, when you know better, do better. He was telling them to change their ways right now. He's telling us the same thing. John's message is urgent, and it is specific. He's not trying to motivate people out of fear. He was motivating people to do, to want to do the right thing. He's continuing to motivate us to do justice and to love mercy. He's reminding us that God wants us to work for the poor, the widow, and the outcast. Working for justice and peace is at the core of our faith. And working for justice and peace produces joy. Exer exercising our faith and putting it into action today. How do you answer this question? I'm going to ask it to you. What then should we do? What should we do then? Put it in two different ways. 
what then should we do? Take a moment right now. Again, I'm always uncomfortable with silence, but I'm going to give us a little bit of silence. Think about this. What should we do then? What is God calling us to do? I'm going to have Hans get ready to show the video, and Barbara's ready to show the video. Think about that question. What should we do then? I'm going to have us watch a video both on Zoom and here in the sanctuary. God put this question to the, the woman who's going to be speaking, and here is how she responded. We've all been to weddings or buffets where we look at the food and we say, this can't be real. What happens to all this food at the end of the evening? 40% of our food supply, we will never, ever eat. The impact of food waste affects us all. In America, there are so many people who don't know where their next meal is coming from. There's a glaring disconnect. The generators of food surplus want to donate, but there's a transport problem. There's no one to take it to a charity, nor do they know where to take it. My name is Leia Lizarondo. I'm the co-founder and CEO of 412 Food Rescue. What we do is we take surplus food from sources such as grocery stores, schools, hospitals, and make sure that it's redirected to charities that serve people who are food insecure. What's really driving this movement is a network of volunteers mobilized by technology. Open the app, pick your rescue. You go, you pick it up. Thank you and it gives you directions to your drop-off. It's simple, it's immediate. That's the gem of this. I, I don't buy into this notion that people will only do, they'll only do a good job if they're compensated for it. Most of the time, people don't help because they don't know how to help. Technology is just a tool, a way for us to realize our own propensity to do something for each other. We need to cross boundaries and see the needs that are around us in every community. One day I was doing a, a delivery for handicapped or disadvantaged people. And I walk in with all this food and there's a crowd of people, they're happy to see me. And, and I notice this old man standing off to the side, just kind of watching things. And he motioned me over. He says, young man, I'm 98 years old. And you being here today and you doing what you're doing helps keep me alive. And I just want you to know that. Currently, we're in five other cities. Our goal is to be in 100 cities by 2030. And I think we can solve three of our biggest problems, food waste, food insecurity, and mitigate climate change. We know that people want to find their purpose. Maybe you don't need this, this huge change in your life. Can we make doing good a part of our daily life? And what are the ways we can create technology to make that happen? I think we will look back in history and say, it was that simple. If we give people the opportunity to help, they will. In today's scripture, John is preparing the way. He's preparing the way of the Lord. Today it is our turn to prepare the way to prepare the way for Jesus to come home. May we prepare by focusing on Jesus, listening to his message of God's love, hope, peace, and joy, and responding in a way that creates a home for all. May you put your faith into action. May you find ways to spread the message of God's love by working for justice and fairness for all. May you help to make this world a better place. May you take the opportunity that God has given to you to help to do good 
in this world and to build the kingdom of heaven of God here and now. Just a reminder, after worship, we have the December lunches that you can volunteer to help with. And Carol also asked me to ask people to bring coats or warm clothes for next week and socks as well, because we will be handing those out um, during the December lunch program at 1 o'clock each Sunday during December. All right, those can be dropped off at the office during the church week as well. Let us pray. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. And now it is time for our praise band for the hymn, the hymn of the day, which is Prepare the Royal Highway and Emmanuel.
Dr. J, if you wouldn't mind, um, I think you know this one, but I heard that it was Roland's ninth birthday today, is that right? Yeah, do you think we could sing happy birthday? that I forgot was that Christmas Eve worship is at 5 o'clock. Christmas Eve worship is 5 o'clock. Christmas Day is 10 o'clock. And then we do have worship three days in a row. You get to go for a hat trick, right? So Sunday morning at 10 o'clock as well. All right. We continue with our offering. The people ask John, what should we do? I've asked myself that a million times in my life. How can we make a difference? Can I really do anything that would help this hurting world? Is it already too late? Is it already too big? It can feel overwhelming at times, but John says, if you have two coats, give away one. It's all that easy, and it's all that hard. So friends, let us give our tithes and our offerings now, knowing that these gifts help build a world where all will have a home, where all are welcomed, fed, loved, and known. What then should we do? We should give what we have, it's all that easy and all that hard. If you are giving to Salem today, remember that you may give through the Give Plus app on your phone. You may also go on to SalemLutheranGlendale.org, our website, where there is a button for you to push. You may mail a check to Salem Lutheran Church and School. Or if you are in person, we have an offering plate that is located at the back of the sanctuary door. I want to say thank you to all who offer their financial gifts and offerings today and every day. And also those who offer their financial, or not their financial, but their offering of time and talents. And right now, I believe we will have Ashley helping us with an offering as we, uh, but first we'll pray. Let's pray and then sing. God who welcomes us home. Let's pray together. God who welcomes us home, who creates space, who leaves a chair with our name on it. We have two coats and we are giving one away. That's what this offering is. It's our second coat. It's our hearts on our sleeves. It's our audacious hope that there can be indeed more than this one. So take these gifts and use them to move us closer to that promised day. Gratefully we pray, amen. And now special music with Ashley.
Please stand. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Advent Creed. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God the Son, savior of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews, and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God of open doors and porch lights, of welcome mats and candles in the window, we cannot thank you enough for your open door policy. You are forever welcoming us home. In a world that puts handrails on park benches so those without a roof over their heads cannot lay down, you offer something radically different. You welcome all of us just as we are. You paint a picture of a world that could be. You remind us that there is enough love to go around and that neighbor helping neighbor is who we are called to be. Thank you for the voice in the wilderness that calls to us. Thank you for the radical welcome and the unchanging love. Today, God, we give extra gratitude for the people and places that are home to us, but we also pray for all those without a home. We pray for immigrant, immigrants and refugees navigating the waters of trauma, change, and loss. We pray for those who experience homelessness and for those scraping together every coin to pay last month's rent. We pray for those who do not feel at home in their body, assigned a gender or an identity that does not fit their spirit. We pray for those who do not feel at home in your church, wounded by strict rules or judgmental accusations. We pray for those who long to build a home with another, but instead find themselves eating another meal alone. God, there are so many who need a home, so help us be builders of that new day. Give us the courage of John, who saw a way forward so clearly. Turn our words into action and our conviction into change. Gracious God, you are a God of open doors and welcome home celebrations. Teach us to be the same. Receive the prayers we offer out loud and the ones that are written on our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we are forgiven and reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, let us be reconciled to each other as we share the peace of the Lord. And today we do that in sign language, and I will teach it to you in case you don't know it. We slap our hands together like this. Peace be with you and also with you. So let's try it together. Peace be with you and also with you. All right, you may be seated. It takes courage to tell the truth. John the Baptist knew it. His job as a prophet certainly could not have been easy. And you and I know it. Our job as people of faith to create a home for all has never been easy. In our prayer of confession, may we channel some of John the Baptist's courage to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. We do not do this to shame ourselves or guilt ourselves for being imperfect. We speak the truth out loud because we know that we cannot grow and change without first being honest. So let us be brave, let us be bold, let us be truth tellers, as we confess together now, 
to a God who could not love us any more than God already does. Together we say, expansive God, we know that the church is your house, and your house has room for everyone. Yet too often, instead of setting the table for our neighbors, we block the door. Instead of welcoming all, we judge others by our own standards. Instead of sharing our second coat, we hide it in the attic, holding on to fear instead of letting go with love. Remind us that your home is a home for all, that truth requires hard work, that truth requires uncomfortable justice. Help us to be bold enough to see it and brave enough to live it. With hope we pray, amen. Family of faith, God sent prophets like John the Baptist to us because this work is not easy. Helping create a world where all might have a home, where all might be loved, and where all might know peace is a huge goal. Fortunately for us, when we mess up, when we lose our way or forget our call, we are met with grace. God could not love us any more or any less than God already does. So rest in this good news. And together, let us proclaim, we are at home with God, forgiven, claimed, and loved. The door is always open for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now it's time for Holy Communion. If you are at home, please get your elements ready. If you are here, please take out your elements. If you do not have them, please raise your hand. We do have ushers that can hand out extra wine and, and uh, wafers. I was told there is a trick now. Um, if you have been here with us before, we had more expensive, beautiful little chalice kind of things. Well, they're stuck on a boat in Long Beach or something, so we have the cheaper ones right now. If, when it's time, you pull up and you pull down, it will open the wine for you. I, we were having trouble the last two weeks with the cheap cups, so when we get to that part, I will remind you, okay? At this time, you may hold your, your cup as we are blessing them together. When we are in person, we come to a central table in our worship space. When we are worshiping on Zoom, we come to our tables at home. When we come to these tables, we are joined with all others who do so across time and space. When we gather at our tables to, to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we bring bread and wine, simple signs of God's love and humble signs of human labor. When our congregation gathers for the celebration of Holy Communion, we are united with God in Christ with each other, and with the church's mission in the world. Please wait until after the Lord's Prayer to eat and drink. I ask you now to hold up your bread. Or actually, just hold up your cup, because we're not opening it up yet. I forgot. Hold up your, this is different. All right. And so with thanksgiving, we remember, in the night in which we were, he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And now I ask you to hold, continue holding up your cup. If you're at home, hold up your cup. After supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to the disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant, promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, if you are at home, you may hold up your bread and say with me, if you are here, please open the top portion of your cup and hold up your bread. And together we say, this is the body of Christ given for me. This is the body of Christ given for me. If you're at home, it's easier. If you're here, let's pull the tab up and then down, and it should crack. And you should be very careful. If you spill, that's okay. God still loves you. Um, you can peel it back. And I'm going to use the big cup. But together we say, this is the blood of Christ shed for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for me. If you are not receiving the sacraments today, I want to bless you by saying God loves you. 
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for our sending hymn, and then we come back for a little bit more. Hymn number 807. be seated. This is a poem from the Reverend Sarah Speed, advocating for home. I know you don't feel at home in your body. Your clothes don't feel right. Your bones don't feel right. Your name, just a word that people have labeled you with, and what I would give to build you a shelter, a safe space where you could be, a home where you were safe and free. What would I give to car carve out some room for you to process and grieve and dance and sing your way into your true self? But I know it's not that easy. My hands cannot build your safety. My words cannot give you time. My heart cannot be home enough. So until the day when you are truly at home, I will keep marching for you. I will keep advocating for the home you deserve, the home in your own skin. I will keep praying. I will give you my second coat and the shirt off my back and the food for my table. I won't give up on preparing the way. A voice is calling out in the wilderness. Do you hear it? There's more for us here than has been before. As you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, 
All are welcomed, so come back soon. In the name of the Foundation, God, Spirit, and Son, go in peace. Thanks be to God.